and there's it's, it's good. Yeah, I don't think there's a problem. All right, I hit the button. We're live now, so we'll, we'll uh, oh. stop the chat. We'll, we'll, hope, we'll hope the echo goes away. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back with another episode of Talking Preps. I got my man Sam Howell in the back. Um, Langston, we got Dale and Chris. We got a big show. We got fresh faces. We're going to reveal the new Sweet 16. And Chris made a whole, whole lot of changes. You guys oh, got to wait and see what he did so you can fuss at Chris and not me. But here we go. All right, we are back. I bet you guys recognize that young man right below me. Oh, yeah. Mr. Sam Howe, right out of Sun Valley High School. Um, how you doing, Sam? I'm doing good. Appreciate you guys having me on. Man, thanks for coming on. I'm going to get right to it, man. UNC has a lot of pieces coming back this year, 10 of 11 starters on defense. Is this the year that, that uh, you guys get a serious intention for that national championship? Uh, you know, I would like to think so. You know, I think we still have a little ways to go, but, you know, the guys are working really hard this offseason. And like you said, we have a lot of really good players coming back, you know, and, and under Coach Brown's leadership, I think I think we'll have a chance to compete. You know, we're just worried about winning every single game, taking every single game um, as, as the most important game of the season. Um, so that's kind of our mindset. But yeah, I'm, I'm proud of the, guy, the way the guys have been working out this offseason. I think we're really trying to take this, this thing to the next level, and I think we're on path to do that. Coach Brown was on the show last week. He really talked about how you've become a leader and, and how you've kind of taken the reins to, to, to be the guy on this team. And I just want to get your reaction. He, he said you're an early round draft pick as well. I want to get your reaction on that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not really thinking that that far ahead right now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really just worried about my team and just trying to lead these guys and try to win as many games as possible. I think if we take care of what we're supposed to take up, take care of on the field, then the rest of the stuff will come after that. But you know, my focus is fully on on this football team and leading these guys. All right. Now you also being called a bona fide Heisman Trophy candidate. Now there hadn't been a lot of those in Chapel Hill. We got to go back quite a ways. How does that make you feel? I know you're a low key guy, and I know you don't really like all the attention, but you're going to get a lot of attention this year. How does that strike you being a Heisman guy? Yeah, I mean it's definitely a cool feeling. Uh, you know, it's not something I really talk about a whole lot, but it definitely is a blessing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to be where I am today. Um, and, you know, it is, it's a blessing just to have my name tied to to something like that. You know, Heisman's been a dream of mine since I was a kid. So, you know, it's, it's not something I'm specifically working towards, but I know if I take care of what I'm supposed to take care of and, you know, our team is having some success and it's something that that'll be there for me at the end. So I'm definitely I'm definitely paying a little bit of attention to it, but my main focus is on this team and trying to win games. Yeah, if we have a normal year next fall, you're going to have a lot of attention. Uh, we talked with Coach Brown last week, uh, and one of the things that he brought up was last season you had one of the best tandem, or he had one of the best tandem uh, running uh, set of running backs, and they're gone. So what are your thoughts on breaking in uh, some new running backs this year? Yeah, definitely losing those guys is going to be a challenge for us. You know, I think those two guys are two of the best backs I've ever seen in my life and two of the best ever playing college football. And those guys are both going to have a lot of success in the NFL. But, you know, we have a lot of good young guys uh, that, that I'm excited to work with this spring. Um, and then we got a transfer from Tennessee, Todd Chandler, um, who had a lot of success at Tennessee. So there's a lot of guys in that room right now, and they're all going to compete this spring. So I'm, I'm just excited to see who kind of comes out of the spring as, as that guy and who, who really steps up and takes – takes the role. So you guys had a great offense last year, and that, those backs certainly played a big part in it. But uh, you're also losing uh, De'Ami Brown. And so kind of what are your thoughts on uh, on that as far as your uh, receiving and will the uh, offense be able to keep rolling? You're going to have guys to throw to. Yeah, definitely. You know, De'Ami was a really big part of what we did last year um, and Daz Newsom as well. So Losing both those guys is it, it definitely hurt us, but you know, we have a lot of guys in the receiver room that they're going to have to step up this year and make some plays. You know, we have Bo Corrales who's had a lot of success. He's coming back for an extra year. You know, we have Emory Simmons who's, who made a lot of plays last year. Choffrey Brown, younger brother Diami, who made some plays last year. Antoine Green. We, there's so many guys I can name. You know, Josh Downs in the slot. You know, there's, so, there's just so many guys. So I'm excited to keep working with those guys. We've already been working so much, and just you know, because all all those guys are here, and it's how. We lost Diami. We lost Daz. Those those guys kind of have a chip on their shoulder, and they want to prove people wrong. 
I really just want people to stop talking about what we lost and start talking about what we have. So I'm definitely excited for those guys. Hi, Sam. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. I uh, got to ask you a little bit about the NC State rivalry. Uh, they made a video last year that ended with uh, what's a ram to a wolf, pray. Uh, and then after you guys won the game, you kind of referenced that and said it could have been a whole lot worse. Uh, obviously, um, they'll have that up as bulletin board heading into the game this year. Just wanted to kind of get your thoughts about the rivalry. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't really like those guys a whole lot, uh, you know. <laughs> I mean, we definitely like to beat them when we play them. But, yeah, I mean, it's a good rivalry. Uh, I think rivalries are more for the fans. You know, I don't really pay much attention to it. I mean, I, I mean, I, that's my opinion on that whole deal. I don't really pay much attention to a rivalry. I think it's it's more for the fans. But it definitely does make the games a little bit more exciting just because I know a lot of those guys on the teams. But, yeah, definitely we want to we wanna beat them every single year we play them. I know earlier that you said that you aren't necessarily uh... – concerned about the NFL draft, that you're really just concerned about this team. Uh, but last week, Coach Brown did say that he felt like you would be, and that was his words, a top NFL draft pick for this up, uh, for this next year. Uh, can you tell us what your plans for the draft would be right now, or would you be willing to come back for your senior season? Uh, yeah, honestly, I, I haven't really thought about it. I think, you know, it's – I mean, there's so much that could happen uh, this season. You know, there's injuries could possibly happen. You know, I could – could have a really bad year. You never know what's going to happen. Um, so it's not something I'm, I'm worried about right now. I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But, you know, I'm really just focused on this team right now. And, you know, after the season and after the bowl game, um, I'll, I'll start making that decision. And also, I just wanted to get your thoughts on Drake May. Obviously, we've talked a lot about him being from right here in Charlotte. Uh, he's being seen as kind of the heir apparent uh, in Chapel Hill right now. What do you think about his game and, and just your thoughts of working with him now that he's on campus? Yeah, no, I love being around Drake. Uh, you know, first of all, he's a great guy. You know, he works really hard. and I, he's, He has so much talent. You know, he, he had a lot of success in high school, and I think he's going to do the same in college. So, Definitely excited to work with him, kind of teach him uh, what I know about the game and see where he takes from there. I think he's going to have a lot of success in college, so I'm, I'm definitely happy he's here. Well, I hope the echo's gone. Uh, I had a we went up to the uh, NC State Chapel Hill game last year, and uh, Chris made reference to that. And I say we, uh, it was Coach uh, Griner and I, and I just want to tell you, uh, he wanted to talk, but uh, all the way up. And all the way back, you were probably 60, 70 percent of the discussion that we had. Um, but my question to you is, what are you doing in the off season to make yourself better? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think the main thing for me right now is just trying to improve my mobility. Uh, you know, I, don't, I, I think I made a big jump from my freshman year to sophomore year as far as movement wise. And I think I was moving a lot better last year. But. I still think I have a long way to go to, to move how I really want to move. Um, so I'm always working on my mobility, flexibility, and then just always trying to get smarter. You know, there's never – you can never know enough about defenses and stuff like that. So just trying to just trying to master that part of the game as well. The thing that impressed us was your mobility in that uh, ball game. Uh, how about uh, a role of being a builder of the team, a team builder? Uh, can you – Talk about that. Yeah, you know, I think when I came into this program, uh, I mean, they, they had two really bad years, and you know, I kind of wanted to come in and turn the program around. So I think that just kind of starts with, you know, I had to earn the respect of the team, you know, working as hard as I do, and you just kind of have to set the standard. You know, I think as a leader, as a leader of the team, um, you just can't you can't accept anything less than than the standard that you set. Um, so we set we set high standards. We have high expectations for for each other in the locker room, and we just try to make sure everyone's living up to that standard every single day and just working as hard as, as hard as it takes to, to win a championship. Cause that's, that's ultimately our goal here is trying to win a championship. So it's really just comes down to holding guys accountable and just trying to take this program to the next level. And piggyback, piggybacking off of that question, Sam, uh, what uh, about coach Brown's personality and his style of being the leader of the team? What has it surprised you most? Uh, you, you two have both uh, arrived at Chapel Hill at the same time. I mean, just give us your thoughts about him and his style in leading this team. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I didn't really know what to expect uh, coming in. You know, I heard a lot about him, you know, but obviously, you know, he's an older guy. I don't know if he's going to have much energy or anything like that, but Honestly, it was complete opposite of what I thought. You know, yeah, he has so much energy. He brings it every single day. You know, he has a smile on his face all the time, and he just kind of picks his team up whenever we need him to. 
Um, yeah, he's an awesome guy. He's an awesome guy to play for. He's a player's coach. You know, he takes care of us. Anything we need, he's gonna, if it's legal, he's going to get it done for us. You know, if he wants to change the food, anything like that, brand new law room, he does it for us. So, you know, he's an awesome guy to play for. You know, he truly cares about his players, um, not only on the football field, but off the field. So it's definitely a blessing to play for a guy like him. And, and speaking of playing for him, and I've seen the videos and the, and the social media videos and the videos on TV that kind of go along with the games. What What's the best part about being a Tar Heel player right now in this era with Mac Brown? Yeah, I just think you look at where this program was and where it's going. You know, there's a lot of excitement um, around the country, around around campus, just around this football program that really you haven't seen in a really long time. Um, people are really excited about Carolina football, not just Carolina basketball, you know, that's something that I really haven't seen uh, when I was growing up. So it's just exciting to be around. You know, there's a lot of excitement in our locker room. You know, there's so much, so much just excitement around our football program. It's just really fun to be here right now. Sam, I, I heard that you have never had a burger and you never had a steak. I don't believe it, but I got to ask you. Yeah, you know, I've, I've never had red meat in my life. You know, I'll, I'll eat his chicken. You know, ever since uh, that, that right. came out. You never I, around the corner from McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, no, ever since that came out, I, I, I can't get off an interview without that question coming up. So <laughs> it's definitely something I got to get used to talking to ever since that got released. But no, I, I stick to chicken. I, I mainly just eat grilled chicken on a daily basis. And people always ask me if I get tired of it. I don't, you know, so. Yeah. I really a lot of people think I'm I'm missing out on red meat and stuff like that, but I really don't feel that way. Man, Dale is like the smoking king. I mean, if you ever want to get indoctrinated and lose your virginity, Dale is the guy, right? <laughs> Dale, I mean, you smoke everything. You, you can do ch uh, chicken well too. There's lots of ways to smoke chicken. Yeah, but we got to get the man a burger or a steak. I mean, a just burger. a little bit. How about pork? Bit. It's a taste. There's some white meat there. Do you eat pork? I have before. You know, I don't I don't prefer it, but. I definitely know if I change my mind, Dale, I'm going to give you a call one day. What do you do at the cookout? What do you do at the cookout when, when that, that meat's grilling on that charcoal and that smell's coming up, that walk? What do you, it doesn't bother you? Nah, it really doesn't bother me. Yeah. I gave up red meat for about five years. I went to a cookout. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Last question. I'm going to let you go. But, um, all of a sudden, you went from being like the most popular dude in Union County. I remember we come down there and ride around in the car and everybody would wave at you and speak to you. And then you go to becoming one of the most popular people in North Carolina. Your social media goes up. You know, your influence goes up. What is that like? I mean, you know, you probably get stopped when you go to Walmart now. What is that like? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a cool feeling. You know, I, I always dream to be in this position. I think a lot of people kind of complain about everyone knowing who you are. But I, I think it's really a blessing. You know, I really complaining about it so it really just is a blessing you know, I've, I've been so blessed in my life and god has blessed me so many different other absolutely well sam man i appreciate you coming on with us it's good seeing you i haven't seen you in a couple years but uh i see you still got the beer game on it looks good. Yeah, too. I still got it. I'm trying, <laughs> to, I'm trying to get quarter. like Dale, but it's going to take me a little while. <laughs> yeah. I, I see you got that quarterback speak thing going on, too, because I know how you really speak. But I know you, I see you got that quarterback on the interview speak thing. I, I like that. That that mm -hmm. works. But good, good luck to you guys this year, man. Hopefully, we'll get you back on, talk about the Heisman later on this year. How about that? Yeah, appreciate it, guys. All right, That's man. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, sir. That's my man, Sam Howell from uh, North Carolina. Um, Gonna have a big season this year, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, big Joffrey, you know, when Joffrey came into high school, he was uh, faster than his brother. So uh, Joffrey was always the fast one, maybe a little more athletic one. Yeah. Uh, when they were coming up, so they probably don't. Hey, Sam, right. Sam Howe has got a strong first name. <laughs> I mean, like it's strong. <laughs> Sam, who, who's, the, who's the best quarterback you've ever seen, Sam? Is it Sam Howell or right, so, Drake May or Chris Leak? Who is um, it? Drake May, Drake May is the best I've ever seen in high school, uh, talent-wise. Yeah. Now, passion and soul, like his passion for his team, like he has that little man syndrome, like to the fullest extent, that's Sam Howell. Like that's why he's so successful is that he, he when he plays basketball, he thinks he's the best basketball player. I've seen him line up at wide receiver – and he's trying to dag on 
you know, give everybody the de- a stinky leg, dead leg, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> he, he's rolling. So he thinks he's the best at everything he does. Yeah. And I think that competitive nature makes him a first round draft pick after next year. Really? Yeah, he, well, that was Chris Leak, too. Chris, you just described Chris Leak. He's, he's a good guy. guy. He, he, you, guys, you guys didn't tell me I had to roll that. up on the screen. I got the News Observer logo. I got, I got to put my O up there. <laughs> Chris, Chris, Leak, Chris Leak has some flaws in this game. But he had the mentality you were just speaking about. Look at that stud right there. Boy. All right, we got we got a new segment, and we got my man Josh. Say your last name, Josh. So I don't so I don't murder it. Say your last name. Mahatha. Say it again. Mahatha. 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 All right, we got a, we got a new game that, that Gary kind of came up with, and we're gonna we're gonna call it so you think you're young or you're old, and Sam's gonna take on Josh one on one. Josh, you can't touch your phone with your hand because it's gonna give us a lot of feedback. You gotta take you gotta take you gotta take your hand off. And Kenzie and Dale are gonna ask questions, and you guys are gonna answer from the multiple choice selection, and we're gonna see who does the best. You ready, Josh? Yes. All right, here we go. Here we go. Are you better than your coach? Can you say that again? Are you better than your coach? Are you better than me? No. Yeah. All right. What What are you better than me at? I got better looking hair. It's growing up too. Like, like. <laughs> All right. Hold on a second. Let, let me Let me clear the, Let me clear the screen a little bit so we can get a little 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 tighter on Josh and uh, Sam. You sent me those questions and now I can't find them. Yeah, you got to find them, Dale. Mm-hmm. Kenzie got number one. Here we go, Kenzie. Go. So, what is the definition of a simp? A, someone with no personality. B, a snitch. C, a guy who does way too much for a girl or is hated for many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going first on this? You go first, coach. Golly, I, I didn't want you to. All right, so, simp. I'm gonna say a guy who does too much for a girl often hated. I don't know. <laughs> Josh, what you got? I got C. You got C. What's the answer, Kizzy? It's C. Well, look how that boy know what he's talking about over here. Who ain't a? I'm a young buck still at the heart. What's <laughs> <laughs> your, your answer, Coach? C. I said the. Oh, I, okay, I, so we're tied. We're Josh tied. Follow, okay. Josh follows me. Dale has number two. What is Joe Exotic's real name? So from, my, from the, I think the show that everybody watched, right? Yeah. Uh, is it Joseph Allen Passage, Joseph Kennedy, Joseph William Namath, Joseph Smith, or Joseph, I don't care. <laughs> Josh, you go first. Um, I'm going to go with B. B, Joseph Kennedy. All right, Coach Griner, who are you going with? I'm going with D. D. Joseph Smith. You don't think it's C. Griner? Definitely not C. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's wrong. It's A. I don't think William spelled right on that. It's A. It's A. It's A. Yeah, that's the answer. It's A. Both wrong. Yeah. So we're one. We're one, one, and zero. Kenzie. What? What? Okay, that's right. All right. Which actor was the voice of Darth Vader in the Star Wars Star Wars series? A. Morgan Freeman, B, James Earl Jones, C, George Clooney, or D, Don Cheeto. Cheeto. I'm just going to throw something out there in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously don't know this one, but I'm going to go with B, James Earl Jones. All right. Who you got, Josh? I'm going with A, Morgan Freeman. It's James ah. Earl Jones. So so yeah, I didn't want to be too confident. I knew. Two one and zero. Two one and zero. Okay, Dale. Mr. Jones has that nice deep. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Yeah. We're competing, Josh. I forgot to tell you since it's two to one right now. Um, losers got three gassers tomorrow. <laughs> oh boy, now if you lose, I'm coming to feel that <laughs> Just to let you know, my bad. I forgot yeah. to mention that. All right, all right, Dale. Okay. Which Avenger? Other than Captain America, could lift Thor's hammer. Captain Marvel, Spider Man, Iron Man, Vision. Josh, um, 
I'm going with Iron Man. Iron Man. Griner. Wow. It's uh the, the correct answer is vision. Deep. Griner gets it right. I'm surprised wow. you didn't know that with Josh the Avengers. It's three to one. I don't care. <laughs> that one, I think it was three to All right. One. Kenzie, last question. Final question. What is Rihanna's real name? A, Reese Witherspoon. B, Alicia Moore. C, Robin Finley. D, Nicole Scheringer. 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 What's your answer, Josh? A, B, C, or D? I don't want to pick the wrong one. <laughs> this is Rihanna, man. This is like I your. Know, this is like your. I know two of them that are not it. A hundred percent. Which one? B. B. All right, Alicia Moore. Who you got, Coach? I'm going with B too. That's who I was going with. Answer C. Robin Fenty is Rihanna. So Coach Griner wins three to one. Josh, you got gases tomorrow, my friend. And your whole team saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they ain't no big. Hey, hey, Josh. Hey, on a positive note, though, the hair is the hair is looking. Yeah, the hair is killing. I wish I had that hair. Lion mane, right there, true lion mane. How long did it take you to grow that? Uh, like two years, I think. Yeah, I mean that's 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 killing, man. I love that. Keep it up, man. Absolutely, but Josh, good luck to you guys this week, man. And, uh, we'll catch you down the road. All right. Okay. All Appreciate right. It. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, coach. All right, man. How did, did Griner pull that off? I don't know. I think we got to find – Griner cannot go undefeated in, in this game. I'm trying to tell you, you I, ain't, I ain't losing. If there are questions like that, I ain't losing. The you problem is Griner's in the middle. He's too young, but not – he's older, but he's young enough. So, yeah. Yeah, you got to make the questions the open. House a little bit. Uh, yeah. I would have only got the Darth Vader one. Yeah, we, like, didn't, get the, the we didn't get young enough. Pack. We didn't get young enough. I'll have to, I'll have to ask some, some some of the younger kids and see if we can get some uh, well, we got, more younger. If you want to get on, you know, drop us a note. Um, but I did have everybody's uh, Twitter stuff on there. I, I turned it off. You see everybody's uh, information. You can drop them a note. Gary, you have your mic muted. <laughs> we can't, can't get you on. All right, Grice, it's your time. I got to find your uh, your theme music. We got Grice's oh, Grice yeah. gems. Here we go. All right, so you have uh, some players we want to talk about this week, huh? Yeah, you know, and I think Langston, you know, while you're getting that together, we can start off first. My first crisis, is Jim. I want to, you know, start and, you know, recognize the entire Garinger Wildcat football team. Um, you know, they went through some unprecedented challenges this past week. I mean, something that I don't know as a coach, but something as a coach, frankly, disgusts me. So, you know, we go, you know, keep that. I guess I don't know if this is that game here. Yeah, there you go, Langston. You know, yeah, we just sure. want to recognize those guys, you know, heard, heard enough of some Myers Park coaches that were impressed with just how, you know, how, how you know, these kids really showed actually a little more maturity in my mind than the head coach that was uh, hired to lead them and really played a tough game there. I mean, you know, kudos, of course, to Coach Harmon in his first game, but definitely wanted to take some time to make sure that I made that statement out there for that, the Garinger Wildcat program. Um, you know, that's something that's incredibly just disturbing to me as a coach and i'm sure griner I, i'd love for you to kind of weigh in on that as well man it really bothered me yeah i mean i don't know the full details of what went on like what was promised to the coach like i can i definitely wouldn't abandon ship and because you care about players it's all about relationships now at the end of the year if the principal kept doing something that maybe they didn't work out together they they just couldn't coexist then you move on but you cannot put your your guys in a bond like that no matter what you have to duke it out and uh and it just shows you how great Garinger I think Garinger took some great steps he was doing some good things because they had some resiliency there so um you know that's that's pretty awesome like this kid right here is talking I heard him talking earlier I mean very impressive um definitely don't like the number six I get rid of that number but other than that you know <laughs> The kids, the kids did well by playing through that. The coach. Yeah. Is All right, Greg, since you got Michael Miles. Yeah, you know, um, you know, kind of you know, watching the film over this weekend. I mean, you know, people kind of hit me up about this game, just kind of wondering, you know, what went on. I think it was a little closer than some people thought. You know, a big reason for that was Michael Miles for us at linebacker. Had 11 tackles. I mean, any major stop that we had on defense, he was the one, number three was the one getting off the pile. He was the one making the play. 
um, you know, great kid, part of our 2021 class that was there, you know, as rising uh, sophomores. Initially, when we got there, you know, it's just great to see these kids really grow into their own as seniors now as we enter year three and, you know, in the rebuild process. And, you know, it, it, was, it was great to watch and you know, I was excited for them. Well, you yeah, guys, you guys right. get kids up here. That's for sure. Kenzie was a little nervous. She thought she thought well, it I was bad. Nervous. I think my comment was, "If we lose this, I'll never be able to live it down." <laughs> um, who's who's this guy with the white tights on down there? Yeah, you know, uh, one, one of the most precious coaches in the IMAC right there. God, just doing it. <laughs> hey, my, my, my brother, hey, my brother Micah had the white tights on as well. They got a little, they're a little brown at this point, but he has yeah. the white tights on hey. solidarity. Is this yeah. the new Hopewell, or did Huff just have a tough night, Coach? I mean, it can be both. I mean, I think, you know, I think we did, we definitely use the tough, you know, the tough field conditions to our advantage. Our kids have been through a ton of adversity and I think, you know, a situation like this wasn't anything new. So I, I hope it's going to get back on track without, without a doubt in my mind. Uh, we we pick, pick two Vance kids, Jaleek Harrington and uh, a Varian Cole. So, you know, I have the, the unique uh, position in watching this uh, team as we play Vance this week, watch this hit right here from uh, number nine of Varian Cole. They actually had the quarterback go check out. Uh, the ref checked him out to make sure he was okay. One of the toughest hits I've seen. Avarian Cole had seven tackles, a tackle for loss, taught to Coach Hackett. Um, you know, he had a very wonderful power echoes like impersonation in this game. You know, That's he was all over the field and made up. a lot of plays. I, yes, and I say that very, you know, very intently, and I understand exactly what I'm saying. He had, great he had a good game, too. Ten Malik tackles, one interception, one sack. You see the numbers here. I mean, he had the numbers, but I think this tandem right here shows you very much so that that advanced defense is still intact. All right. And then we got Carter Wyatt of West Brunswick. Yeah, Carter Wyatt at West Brunswick. Coach Hickman, I know, is, I know is excited about how well he played. I think he had 13 tackles here, tackle for loss. I mean, he was a guy that was, you know, it, you know, we, big thing with this weather, you know, you're going to have those in-the-box backers that excel. These are those games where I think they're really going to load up and have some big stats, and I think we saw that this week. I mean, you know, great guy right here. It seems like he has a great nose for the ball. You know, as you can see, he's squarely right there, you know, in every single play, reading the guards and the, in the you know, the back motion, and he's getting to that to that ball 100%. So it was great to see, you know, some other teams. And, you know, like you said, we highlight a lot of these teams in this area. Great to see some guys out there in Brunswick County out near the beach. You know, the, yeah, they, they, they do more than just a great vacation destination. Absolutely. You guys want to be on uh, Grice's Gems, you know, drop Grice a note. There's his Twitter on, on Fridays after big games. We definitely want to get you guys. We want to feature kids. I mean, we want to yeah. feature kids. We want to put you on. We want to put your highlights on. The private school kids did a great job last year. They took these highlights with our voiceovers. They sent them off to college. Some of them got scholarships. I mean, do that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, you know, knock yourselves out. All right. It's time for the game of the week. Chris, you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. And I believe our game of the week for this week, obviously, is going to be the big one right here uh, in Mecklenburg County and kind of on the fringes right there across the border in um, Union County at Weddington, uh, Charlotte Catholic at Weddington. That that was a little bit of a blowout last year, uh, but can we expect the same thing? I don't think so. I think that uh, this is set up to be a really interesting game. Uh, both teams had, um, you know, they, they kind of took care of business the way we thought they would last week, uh, 27 nothing victory. Uh, for Catholic over Monroe, uh, Weddington went down and handled their business 46 to 43 to six, I think it was, over Sun Valley. Um, two power, power defenses. You know, both these teams play a physical brand of football. Uh, I, I'm excited to see. Uh, I, from I was looking at, I watched both games on the NFHS network. Uh, it looked to me, though, Catholic looks like they started the sophomore quarterback and, and, and kind of shook things up a little bit on offense. So I'm, I'm anxious to see how that young man does against what a, a, a waiting to defense that I still think is the real deal. Uh, I'm, I'm anxious to get what you guys think out of it, but I think it's going to be a good game. Well, I guess I'll jump in. So somebody jumped. Uh, the, the great thing about this game, if anybody wants to watch pure football, these both of these teams – are technique to the max. And uh, when you guys were discussing earlier in this, uh, or last week actually, about uh, where these teams should be ranked, Weddington reloads. And the reason they do that is they have a great youth program there. But uh, 
I don't expect this to be a blowout like uh, last year. No, I think that uh, both teams uh, play solid defense. Uh, of course, this is a different kind of um, uh, football with uh, the pandemic and how things are. But still, uh, I think it's going to be a great ball game. Uh, I, I personally, I like both programs. Uh, I like Weddington a lot. I didn't think that their uh, graduation uh, issues would hurt them at all. I, I expect them to, to be play this game very well. well. It's going to be a solid game. I mean, I think, you know, with the pedigree of these two teams, you know, with both of them, I think, what are they, both two-time 3A and 3AA state champions. Um, you know, it's one, it's one of those games where it's, you know, you rarely get this type of game. And I think had this game, you know, if it was in Mecklenburg County, it would receive even more of the hype that a Mallet Creek Vance game would get. I mean, I think the biggest thing that we're going to see here is, you know, who has who has overcome more from the pandemic? I mean, I think you know, with such a system team like a Charlotte Catholic, does that bode in their favor with some you know with those kids really running that system from the ground up? You know, can Paul Neal make a big impact? I mean, he's you know a big running back. I think he's a junior this year. You know, he's a key player. And he's, you know was integral to their state championship run last year. Will he be able to do the same against a, a reloaded Weddington defense? I think is a major question for me this game. I think yeah. it, I think it's a time where you get to see physical football like it used to be played about 20 years ago where it's the line of scrimmage um blocking and tackling the old fundamentals uh, are going to be very very important in this game it's it's not a spread game uh, i still think if catholic gets behind we need to see what kind of improvements they've made in their passing offense because they they tend to struggle when they have to play from behind yes I agree. I agree, gentlemen. Um, and, and just moving on to the other game of the week, uh, moving to the Raleigh area, uh, Wake Forest um, playing at or uh, playing Cardinal Gibbons. Uh, I had a chance to really dissect the Wake Forest win uh, here in the opening week one uh, against Garner. They won 36 to seven. Uh, they got a great decision maker in their quarterback Chad Hillman and while they are not a passing team very similar to a Catholic though uh, with their pistol wing T attack when they do pass it becomes very effective passes and extremely high percentage passes uh, they, they've got a great slot guy running back guy who, who just seems to be their Mr. Everything whether in the passing lanes or in the running game and, and Mikey, and I got, I got to make sure I get this name right, Mikey De Pasquale, I think is his name, a really good uh, guy who, who does a great job. And, and then just kind of a, if that was the game A out of the East, we got another one that I think is equally as good just to kind of make sure that we're uh, kind of putting the spotlight on some of these teams is Rollsville uh, taking on Rocky Mount. Uh, we, we've heard a lot of the feedback and then a lot of the buildup about this Rollsville team, uh, quarterback Byron Brown. I uh, expect really big things. They weren't able to play their week one game against East Mac because of East or East Wake uh, because of their uh, COVID protocols. Uh, but this should be exciting to see them finally hit the gridiron. All right. Well, there we go with our uh... – Games of the week for Mr. Chris. We'll give you a break, Chris. It's uh, Kinsey time. Kinsey, I got a little surprise for you this week. I got a little company. We got uh, Zoe McElroy from Olympic High School. She's a freshman. You you play volleyball and you swim. You like cooking and baking. And you're yes. really good with the video camera. Thank you. What kind of bacon? Like, I'm excited about this. What kind of, what's your specialty? <laughs> I agree. Um, my family really likes, like, chocolate peanut butter cake. Like they can't like get enough of that and like lemon yeah, bars. The pandemic's over. You got to make a talking preps, talk peanut butter cake. We got to have one of those. <laughs> have one. Well, I agree. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So Zoe's going to be doing a little filming, kind of like what Kenzie does for us. You're going to do uh, Cameron Smith next week, right? Yes. Zoe. Yes. All right. So we have two. We have two videos. But this, this segment of the show, we always give Kenzie is her time. We call it Kenzie time. She goes out, interviews, and play every week. We're going to add a segment for you. Uh, coming up, but uh, Kizzy, you know, talk, tell us about what you got going on. Well, you know, the Camerons at Olympic are taking over. Um, Cameron Kennedy, though, I mean, wide receiver, uh, saw a highlight on Twitter and man, just broke a kid's ankles. Like that kid went sliding. I don't know if he's ever coming back. He on skates. Zoe, do you know Cameron? Yes, I do. How good is he? 
he he's pretty good. I'm on the like sidelines on last um last Thursday, and I'm like, geez, like slow down, Cam. Like we see doing <laughs> stuff, but. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's see what you got, uh, Kenzie. Here we, I didn't find any videos, Cameron, so you got to update your videos. But here's, here's the, uh, the the clip with Kenzie. Today we're here with Cameron Kim Kennedy of Olympic High School. Cameron, uh, we've seen you've been putting in a lot of work in the off season. What has that been like? Um, it's been amazing. Um, it's a lot of hard work, uh, and so it's it's a mental thing because um, just not knowing if we're going to play it just played a big part in being prepared for the season. Cameron, we've also seen that Olympic has excelled over the past few years. How do you guys plan on continuing with that in the future? Um, it's all about just coming out of practice and uh, competing every day because uh, com we compete in practice like we compete in the games, and uh, that's just going to make a big part in the, in the way we play in the game. Um, you guys also have some key players that are returning. Uh, who are those guys, and what are they going to mean to this team? Um, I can name about six guys off the top, Cam Smith, Sean Bowles, um, Albert Fleming, Kai Russell, um, and myself. Uh, we've just played a big part uh, with the experience. We've played together for uh, three and four years now, so um, that's going to be a big key part in our team this year. Uh, you also put out a tweet that said that you guys were the number one team in the conference and number two in Charlotte. Um, what do you have, I mean, to support that? I've watched practice. It's been incredible. Um, I mean, how do you feel about that statement? Um, that was a very truthful statement uh, coming from myself. I'm very confident, just me and also in my team. So, um, hey, hey, the proof's in the pudding. That's all I can really say about that one. All right, Cam, we got a speed round. What's your favorite color? Um, red. Red's my favorite color. What's your favorite uh, musical artist? Um, Pusha Ice. Favorite movie? My, my favorite movie is probably uh, Love and Basketball. Favorite TV show? Um, I'll say about Criminal Minds. Um, and if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? Um, it'll probably be back to Germany. I, I love Berlin, Germany. Just to visit there and just be there over time is amazing. All right, Cam, it was nice talking to you. I appreciate it. I'll tell you what, that kid right there is something else. He's, like, he's great. I mean, he's I mean, when he's talking about Germany, like, the dude breaks himself down, man. I, that dude's a ball player. And I think that he's 100% correct. Like, if I had to choose a team in our conference to dominate, I think it's going to be um, Olympic for sure. And I think that they're on the climb. Their, their coach did a phenomenal job last year, and he's growing from that. You keep so, saying our conference. You're not in that conference anymore. You know, in, that, in that conference. I didn't say You said in our said, conference. You said in our conference. Did I really? Well, Zoe, yeah. Zoe, thanks for coming on the show. We're looking forward to seeing what you got going on. I know you, you want to go to University of Miami or Southern Cal. Is that right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so hopefully we'll give you plenty of clips you can send off to college. You can be like Kinsey and get accepted everywhere you apply to. Kinsey has like a choice of 9,000 schools. It, it's wow. three, but. <laughs> <laughs> but they're three big ones. Right, we'll, 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 talk, we'll talk to you next week. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Okay, thank you for having me. All right, thanks for coming on. Take care. Okay. I'm telling you guys, her videos are incredible. You, I mean, you're going for a real treat when you see what she comes up with next week. All right, so we got Chris on the screen, Sam. Let me put uh, Kinsey in the back. You know what that means? It's time for Chris's corner. Mm -hmm. And Chris has some Sweet Sixteen picks. That uh, oh boy, here we go. Let me find his theme music. Chris's corner. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, we are about to drop the, the Sweet 16, and I believe we're going to do the Sweet uh, 32, the second Sweet 16, so I'm anxious to, to see those. Um, but before, you know, I always try to give just a little tidbit or, or what's on my mind, and, and I've got to throw wait, this out oh, there. Wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't load the second Sweet 16, so we just got to go with the first Sweet 16. It's okay. It's okay. Do you want me to give it, or can we just let it come out later? We'll, we'll do it next week. My bad. <laughs> That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Uh, but I, I do want to, uh, you know, I'm always trying to put a little nugget out there of, of information or, or something uh, from, from my thought process. And going into this season, 
and, and, and even dating back to my days, whether it's as a youth plan coming up plan or coaching or, or just being around the game, you know, I thought to myself of being a purist, you know, if it's raining, I want to see the guys playing the rain, playing the mud. I think that's the true form of football. Uh, but I've got to say this, you know, if there was one underlying thing that I have to, to say about the games, I think I went to four games, three games in person this weekend, watched a lot of them on the NFHS network and through some huddle uh, links. Um, the, the one word I would say about football this week was sloppy. And, and a lot of that was execution from the lack of practice time and just, you know, this new norm that we're in with football being in the spring. Uh, but a lot of it was the fields. You know, I used to think playing on a mud field was cool, but now I look at some of the fields and I've spoken with a lot of the athletic directors and football coaches in the uh, state who said that their fields won't even remotely uh, recover, not not only for the games the rest of the spring season, but they think it could be a problem into the fall season. And, and I do think that that's, that's just a tough deal uh, for football this fall. I think it's only going to get worse as we get to spring showers and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it makes for some, some cool looking games and the muddy uniforms and things like that. Uh, but boy, uh, I think that this spring season, and again, it is what it is with the pandemic, but I think we're going to be looking at some really costly fixes to, to get some of these fields back up to back up to where they need to be. Uh, just to throw a couple out there that I've seen uh, South um, uh, South Granville uh, up there just above the Raleigh area. I was at Hickory Saturday night and their field was just absolutely trash Uh and, and, and nothing, no doing of their own. Obviously, it's just Mother Nature and the time of year. So uh, that, that's just kind of my thoughts. And now, Langston, if we want to go ahead and cue those picks, and we can certainly talk about the, the Sweet 16. Uh, first, I want to do the News and Observer Sweet 16, uh, which is a new concept that we've uh, started here. Um, and, and there you see it right there, uh, Cardinal Gibbons. I don't think there's any surprise there. Uh, Cardinal Gibbons coming in number week, number one last week, uh, playing Wake Forest this week. We mentioned that's our Raleigh area game of the week. So boom, you've got these two teams going head to head. I think that's going to be some, uh, good, good football, uh, up there, uh, in, in Wake County this week. Uh, Cleveland had a huge victory over a really, really strong Southview team out of Fayetteville week. Southview is always in the mix year in, year out. And that, I think that was a real statement win uh, by Cleveland. Uh, Heritage as well, you know, a team that just keeps moving up. Uh, Leesville Road, even with the close loss to uh, Cardinal Gibbons Friday night, it's hard to leave uh, or to push Leesville down too much. Uh, Rollsville, they dropped a little bit, and they did not play. And it's not that I think Rollsville – uh, it has any less stock than they had coming into the season. Uh, but not having that open and weak game, it's hard to gauge where they're at and, and with who they're playing. Uh, but I mentioned the team uh, playing Rocky Mount Friday night. They should get a real opportunity to show where they really are. Uh, and just moving down the list, uh, Southern Durham had a 28 nothing win over Northern Durham. Uh, Clayton had a big win. Um, over 4A Corinth holders, uh, Wakefield, huge win over Southern Nash, uh, Princeton with a big win um, over East Duplin, a big Eastern North Carolina power. And then look there, number 11, you got the Sanderson Spartans right there coming in. Big win over Enloe. That's Coach Jeremy Buck, by the way, coach, longtime coach in Mecklenburg County, uh, East Mac, uh, West Charlotte. He's West Charlotte for a long time, Vance and head coach at Harding. Uh, and then ra ra rounding out the top 16, uh, you see Holly Springs, Nightdale, Apex Friendship, Millbrook, and Garner. Uh, I think I think that's some pretty decent football teams right there. Uh, and and we'll, we'll, some of them are going to go a long way in the playoffs. Uh, and then now, Langston, whenever you're ready, we can queue up the Observer Sweet 16. And there we go. Obviously, I don't think there's any room for discussion with number one. Uh, the performance they put on the display Monday night or Friday night against Mallard Creek was incredible. Uh, so there you got Vance coming in number one. Richmond County just kind of holding st steady right there at number two. Uh, they got a big game Friday night against Pinecrest. Uh, so that's going to be a big, big game. Uh, those two teams really get after it when they go head to head. Uh, Charlotte Catholic and Weddington, there you see them three and four. They play Friday night as well. So we're going to have some of these matchups. It's going to really be that separation Friday to see who's good, who's not. Uh, Shelby with the big win over East Gaston. Uh, Butler's a team. Chris, you got your mic, your mic turned off. There we go. I don't know what happened with that, but I watched every snap of that game with Butler, and uh, I think the Bulldogs are a really, really strong team. 
Kings Mountain impressed me with their win over Forest View Crest. A.O. Brown, really good teams. A.O. Brown, I think they're a team. I watched uh, their game with Northwest Comparis. That's yeah. a really dangerous team. Burns, High Brighton, Myers Park. I, I think the jury's still out on Myers Park, but they really look good against uh, Garinger. Salisbury with a huge win and just totally dominant over Western Land. Huff, you know, Huff dropped quite a bit. Uh, Kizzy, and, and Kizzy. A lot of that's got to do with Grice and, and what Hopewell had. In fact, Hopewell would be in the second 16. I just want to show you all that, tell you all that. Hickory Ridge, you know, that was a close game with Indy. You know, the one thing I want to say about Hickory Ridge, and, and Gary, you can expand about that. Gary. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, Jeep's coaching basketball and track. I don't even know how much time. I don't know how much time he's in there even better to coach football. And the he, fact he's, 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 very, very, he's very skilled at what he does. Absolutely. And he really trusts his assistants because he missed a couple of practices uh at football because we had a game. Um and he, he was late to a couple, yeah. but you know, he he really um Dedicated himself to basketball first because th that was the current season. Yes, and, and then he moved over to football, and and I'm sure he was exhausted this weekend. Has right. to be. But he gets more the props from me just for being to hold it together and and do everything at such an extreme level. Uh, yeah. So major kudos from me. Well, and he was coaching the year in basketball. One thing. Yeah. About is it like I go to church on Sundays and, and Jupiter goes to church, same church I do go to, and he actually works <laughs> part of he's part of the um the varsity center. Like sometimes if the if the youth pastor can't preach, he'll preach like a few Sundays a I've year. Seen, yeah, I've I've it's seen that. Like, it's all baby. But That's what caught my eye though? First of all, you guys understand this man's knowledge of high school football. He just told you in depth about one end of the state and in depth about another end of the state. Yeah, we're yeah. very lucky to have Chris Hughes on the show. Grace, did you catch that comment that Hopewell's in the second Sweet Sixteen? Did you hear that? Doesn't change what we got. We have the defending state champions actually on Saturday this week. Uh, if I'm dropping that talking preps exclusive, oh. have them on Saturday at uh, William A. Huff High School. So we're breaking um, news. We're breaking news. The road does not get any easier for us. So thank you for that. But again, it doesn't change the work. I was going to ask about y'all's field. Y'all's field look bad. In the, Our in the field, middle. definitely. You know, again, you talk about home field advantage. I mean, I think that, you know, you have to use everything at your disposal in order to get that advantage. And we know now we'll get three full weeks um, as far as from a varsity standpoint until we touch it again. So, you know, it's, it's like like Chris said, it's, it's an unfortunate situation. But, hey, you know, we felt that it would be to our advantage as a team to play on that field. And, you know, we utilize everything we could and almost pulled out the upset. So. All right, Greg, it's time for your favorite part. What do you say, Kizzy? You're welcome, my kindness, me letting you use my school. <laughs> I just feel like I really pulled through for you there. I mean, I didn't know about it. <laughs> I was about to say, you and uh, Master Nora Tugusa, shout out to Tugusa. Also, for, um, thank you, Kenzie, for not talking about me falling and, and half of my tights <laughs> being brown. Uh, Tugusa saw that and made sure to call me out in front of the entire stand. <laughs> for 20 fans in the stand, so he, you know, his booming voice. Man, I, I did that one time, play, I was playing on the softball team for the Observer. I had on these white shorts, and it was muddy, and I went for a, a catch. I was trying to be all cute and slid around right on the floor. <laughs> I know oh, it was <laughs> We were all dirty. I know the feeling. All right, Grace, it's time for your favorite part of the show that I always you got it, up. man. Let's go. All right, here we go. Our first guy up. And I'm, I am like really, really lost. I got to do better at this. I, I can't even see. It's like our first cup is Elijah. Our first yeah. is Elijah Wilson Kinsey of Mooresville. Yeah, I mean Elijah. He's an athlete. Um, he he's really good at knowing where the ball is, and I mean it shows. I mean he's got a lot of interceptions. He makes a lot of really good tackles. Reads really well, and he he's there to cause disruption disruption and it shows i mean he and you know one thing he never slumps and that shows right here i mean speed kills and, and he he's really running after people and making them regret their decisions on the field very quickly grace what kind of problem is this guy going to cause you in a couple of weeks 
Oh, uh, I mean, quality kid. I mean, Mooresville keeps, you know, Mooresville keeps athletes, man. That's one thing that they never have to worry about there. You know, interesting to see his versatility and some different things that he does uh, on that defense. Uh, you know, under new coach Nixon, I mean, I'll be curious to see because they haven't played a game yet, unfortunately. I'll be curious to see what they do. But I think the better question is, Kenzie, hey, man, you know, you guys have uh, you guys have Mooresville this week. They better, better make sure you watch out. I think upset alert. I'm stressed out about it. I, I'll, I'll let you know that. Um, it, it's it's been a rough rough week in in my head of thinking about how I'm gonna deal with how this season if it goes badly because I know you guys are here to you know hold me accountable so <laughs> I just you were the one that started all the conversation I want to I want to say that you know I, you know, I, you know, I really thought you had it in the bag but hey you know Hopewell came out played a great game and you know really really scared me there for a long time. All right, Gary, I'm always giving you quarterbacks. Here's Kate Cunningham of Heritage uh, High School up east. Hey, well, first of all, let me say, I don't know if this is a blessing for him or a curse because the number one freshman in the country in college basketball is also known as Kate Cunningham. It's supposed to be a lottery pick. So when you hear this name, Kate Cunningham, we're talking high school football in this case. But the number one um Prospect in the NBA lottery is also named Cade Cunningham at Oklahoma State University. Uh, this quarterback, what impressed me about Cade Cunningham, the quarterback, the high school kid, is unlike most high school kids and even some college kids, when he feels pressure, he steps up. And most kids, they they come out the backside. They they scramble right, they scramble left, they cut down half the field. Um, they're running with their with their shoulders pointing at the sideline. If you watch this kid, he steps up every time he feels pressure. He steps up, and that's kind of hard to teach. They do drill for it, but from. kids re revert to their their athleticism in in times of adversity. And this kid, he remains calm. He steps up. Has a great arm. He's six four, so he can see over the line of scrimmage. Um, I didn't see any stats on him, but I, I think he, he's a good quarterback. Yeah. Sam, what you see anything you like there? Yeah, I like that a lot. Like exactly what Gary said, the way that he steps up into the pocket, it threatens the defense right now. And it looks like he keeps his eyes down the field very, very well. It's very hard for high school kids to do these days because as soon as those guys are speed rushing off the edge, they want to look down. He's keeping his eyes forward and stepping up. All right, Chris, we got a, a guy we, we had kind of agreed on last minute, Aiden Shekow, up your up your way. Yeah, I've seen Aiden Shekow um, really since ninth grade as a JV player. Uh, Oak Grove, brand new high school just outside of Winston-Salem, Coach Mark Holcomb. Uh, this is a running back who can be in the traditional <laughs> out formation. Uh, he can run out of the shotgun, and he is just a big, big, big lumbering kid. Gets downhill in a hurry. Uh, there you see right there, gets a lot of yards after contact just because he's such a big imposing force. Uh, there you look at him right there, number nine right there, great end zone angle. Hey, look, he follows the blocks, looks for his opening, and boom, once he gets that hole, he is gone. Uh, but he is a big, big, big boy. He ain't a speedster. Uh, he's just a big physical guy. Uh, I actually covered this game uh, on the TV uh, last year. Um, I think that was the Hopewell, I mean, the Ledford game. Uh, Coach, but he, he's, finishing, he's finishing runs. Like, he's faster than what you yeah, think. Yeah, I was about to say, Brown, he keeps saying low run, but nobody's yeah, catching right. from behind now. He might be uh, a little yeah. He's finishing runs. Like, yeah, I yeah, you give him some credit I, here. I haven't seen him get caught yet. See, right there. Man, you, know, you know what's funny now? When we were showing highlights, he said this was a private school. Sam was picking at them dudes. It looked about the same to me, but I'm, I'm going to let that go. Here's the one well, thing. He found his home. I'm going to let that go. <laughs> just to finish out the thing about Aiden Shukal, he may be a running back, and Oak Grove's blessed to have over 100 guys on the team. He could very easily be a middle linebacker. He's a guy that would hit yeah. you into tomorrow. A big guy. Yeah, he's a All right, player. we got uh, one of Newsom's kids right here, uh, Isaiah Blackdale. Yeah, so watching this kid, now the throws that we'll see here are, are pretty decent throws mostly, uh, but what I've seen at looking at a lot of his highlights is he's not really given an opportunity. He has to wait to catch the ball. 
many times, but very athletic. He's got some good speed. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> very good hands. Uh, you'll see a few. You'll see a few throws here where he has to to wait. He, they also hand him the ball. He, he, uh, I think he's a great kid if you get him in space. That's an easy touchdown if uh, the ball's there. And look at that field. I love that field. Yeah, they have a great field, don't they? Yeah, I didn't they know they had dirt there. Too. That's really nice. They got they got that first clip we saw of the catch against Davy County, I was on the field for that game. That was a snap as time expired. Last play of the game, Hail Mary to win it. So that just shows how aware he is at the biggest of big situations. Yeah, yeah anybody can control to do that. And you barely have kids that can walk, talk, and chew gum. And that, that kid jumped in the air, spun 180 degrees to catch the ball and stay in bounds and score. I know, he, like I know he's being coached. Yeah, well. oh, oh. I know he's being coached well. Okay, I'm I'm uh, yeah. about to, I'm about to have a a uh, we got to change the order because I lost the highlight. Sam, I'm gonna put your guy up right now while I find right. the uh, the other highlight. A.L. Brown too, because I was looking at his highlights and he played at Central. I think I think so. Uh, right, here, here's Gabe. Here's Gabe. Here's GPA though. There you go. Love that GPA. Something this is Central Cabrera stuff. Um. He's playing for Central Cabarrus, and he's playing guard. But he's yeah. talking about guys that can and finish. That's all you want, your interior lineman. You want guys that have got a little nastiness to him. And I, it looks like he's got some nastiness to him. I wish that he highlighted himself pre-snap a little bit more so you can pay attention. See, he's, see how – whenever you're doing highlights, just to give you an example, guys, if you're ever a lineman, you need to highlight yourself before the play happens so that we can identify your burst off the ball. You don't want to be hitting a guy then like point a point on your, your head saying, this is me. Let us see you be able to explode right from the get-go and uh, be able to see your hips and explosion and stuff. That's why if you do your highlight. But this guy does a great job. Um, now, if he's at Central Bears, they got a great one. If he's at A.L. Brown, I'm not sure because he might, I've heard he might have been at A.L. Brown. Um, but I think he plays for Central Cabarrus, and he'd be a, a senior this year. So uh, definitely a physical, physical guy, and that's what you're looking for. And uh, one of those guys is like a leader on the offensive line. And uh, they, they have a gritty group, though. I heard that Central Cabarrus is very gritty. Um, they're doing a good job. Their system's rolling. You know, I mm -hmm. thought they lost a lot of guys, but they're actually doing very well. All right, Grice, I got to apologize and apologize to Tanner Schmidt of Lake Norman. His highlight just completely blew up in, as I was trying to fix it. I marked him down for my script for next week. There it is. Um, uh, no, but I'm sure, like I said, he's a kid. Hey, coach, we'll get uh, David Johnson, um, defensive coordinator, Coach Olafont, you know, head coach, defensive-minded head coach. I know he, you know, I've seen him enough to know uh, he's a good kid. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, definitely, we'll, def we'll definitely, Tanner, I'll, I'll get your highlights next week. Put them on huddle for me. I'll grab them, and we'll talk about you. I apologize. I had them loaded up, and uh, they, they just absolutely blew up on you me. Probably just, you could probably highlight the game he played against us. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, man, that, that late Norman defense grinder, I told you, they, they were one of the better that. defenses. I want that, Tanner that, to reach out that, to me. Grace, you, you know what time it is now? I know what time it is. Dun, dun, dun. Where's the music going? Ooh, like Darth, speaking of Darth Vader, uh, oh, home, like in the question Come earlier. On, bro. D &D. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. What are we doing? But I still didn't get to, I still didn't get the music the uh the video Word. correct. You're still gonna say basketball, so Gary, don't get mad. <laughs> See, Grace, I can say it. <laughs> Alex is not here tonight. His father passed away, so prayers to Alex and his family. So I'm gonna I'm gonna host a segment for him tonight. Um, good dude, man. I hate his father, uh, Larry, passed this, this weekend. So uh, prayers to Alex. Um, so let's get gloom and doom and Kenzie going. And uh, let me find the theme music. And here we go. All right, guys. One's got to go. Gary's a chef, so I think he probably came up with these questions. Ketchup, mayonnaise, mustard, or onions? Kenzie, which one's got to go? Mustard. Easy. No mustard? Why no mustard? I'm just not a mustard guy. You know? <laughs> I, I'll, I personally you don't like grilled hamburgers. You don't like mustard. I'm sorry. No, I do like hamburgers. I just like them. You like, said you like flat top hamburgers. What? 
You said you like flat top hamburgers. I do. I do like a flat top. Hamburger. Yeah. See, I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a yawn. All right. So no mustard for kids. Gary, what you got? Uh, ketchup. Uh, I don't like ketchup on a hot dog. Uh, and I can eat it on a hamburger. Um, I don't have to have it on fries. I can eat it on fries. But on all other sandwiches, you know, mayo, mustard, onions uh, there, especially onions. Onions are my favorite. <laughs> I, I can do it without ketchup. Damn. There's a place for all of these. Yeah. That's the problem. There's a place yeah. for all of these. Uh, I love them all. I, I I don't I honestly don't know what I could toss. You know, I can eat mayonnaise, take a spoon and eat it. I love mayonnaise. Yeah. I thought I'd get that reaction. Um, <laughs> ketchup has its place. A good hot dog with a little bit of ketchup. Onions, you know. When you mix the ketchup and mayonnaise together and you put a little relish in there. Well, that's that's about the island sauce, but oh, uh, goodness, that's that, um, that's what, onions. Would, onions would have to go. I do like a little mustard and ketchup on a hot dog, but because I like that ketchup mayo mix, I, I I'd have to, to kick onions out. But, I, but I, you I, can't I, have a Carolina dog without onions. I, I just have to live without onions, man. I, I gotta have that, 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 burger. that that burger sauce thing, you know, that McDonald's type of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I I I can't can't go without it. Uh, All right, Gary, <laughs> equipment inventory. Washing uniforms or being stuck with that Ellis Building paperwork? <laughs> well, these are all things that. This is a coach is. question. Yeah, oh, it's definitely a coach question. I, I'd like to hear what Sam and uh, Grace have to say about. Oh, it. Wait, wait a minute, we, we'll, we'll bring it. We'll bring him in for. This. Let me find. We'll bring him in for this question. There's, there's Grace and <laughs> Grace is on the phone. Wait a minute. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hey, don't get up. Hey, this is our, you know, this is our backstage right. conversation. Oh, let's start with our regulars, and then we'll come down to the coaches. Dale, equipment so, inventory, washing uniforms, eligibility paperwork. All right. So if the context of this is a coach, then without question, eligibility paperwork has got to go. That's an AD job. Should be an AD job. An AD it's should have to teach. Well, it's the school's responsibility to provide eligible athletes. Now, granted, coaches have to own up to what happens, but this, that's got to go. I mean, washing uniforms, that's part of the deal. And equipment, you need that. The, the eligibility's got to go. Give it to the AD. Kizzy. You know, I'm not going to lie. I've never done any of these things. So. <laughs> I got yelled at rich time for my basketball uniform up wrong, so um, I don't really know. Um, but you know, I don't like paperwork. I Good don't like laundry, and I can't alphabetize. So you know, I think they just all got to go. All got to go. <laughs> go. Gary, I'll be down with that. <laughs> all right, I know y'all say this is an AD's job, but let me tell you what AD's say. And Griner, you back me up on this. Mm -hmm. Once they turn it all in. Then they say, give it to me. So we're talking about insurance. We're talking about address, uh, two proofs of address, certain bills they got to turn in, um, permission slips, the the, con uh, the concussion protocol information. The ADs want you to get it all and sort it and then give it to them. Okay. So, you know, you're chasing after kids individually say, hey, I still need your concussion papers. I still need your insurance papers. I need your permit. And you got to go down a list of 50 to 100 kids checking off seven to eight different forms that they got to turn in. So for me, it's eligibility paperwork anytime. Yeah. Coach Grace, coaching perspective, they asked for you. So, all right. In the fall, it would be eligibility paperwork, hands down. But after this weekend, we are on wash cycle six of our jerseys, and we still got to send them for another cycle. So oh, wow. after we won, them wash uniforms got to go for a while. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely the paperwork. That's that's a joke. Now I'm blessed with an unbelievable AD. He does a great job putting it on a Google form. Always updates me if this person needs something, so I can reiterate it to the. 
and I don't have to, I don't have to gather the information. He takes it all right from the get go. So I'm, like I said, I'm in the best spot I've ever been in. It's going to take some time to get us where we need to be. But I'll tell you about my supporting staff. Above Wait, me. Are you going to stay at West Charlotte five years? You're on the one shot. hundred percent. I will, I will not leave. I had an opportunity to go to Tennessee um, for about a $130,000 job and I did not go. And uh, I know people think that might be crazy. I didn't pursue it. Um, I just, I really like, I, I understand. I, I made some mistakes leaving the inner city school, you know, getting my pride, let the, my pride get the best of me. And I realized I do better in chaos. I really do. I just do better in chaos. It might take me some time, but I like being involved where I can make a difference, build treasures that last forever. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to stay there. All right, we got grinding on the record, West Charlotte, five years. I would say, to answer the question, I would I would probably say eligibility paperwork because I just hear ADs uh, going nuts on eligibility paperwork every year. And ADs should not have to teach. They really shouldn't. I mean, CMS, no, they should. They should be a full -time CMS really, really, really needs to take a look at that because those people work way too hard. Sam has some love from Karen Belt. Sam's a good dude, y'all. I'm telling y'all, Sam gets a bad rap. I defend him a lot, but he's a good dude. I, I, I know Sam quite well, and I've known him for a while. Um. All right, where was I? Got to go. Uh, Dale, you get to start. Do you like waiting at the DMV less, delayed flights less, or slow restaurant service less? Which one has so, to go? The real, you, you like none of these, but only one of them can be very negatively impactful, and that's delayed flights. Uh, if you're a business traveler and you've got to get from point A to point B, you know, I have flown... Um, I've been on over 500 planes. Uh, so I've had a lot of connecting flights. And when you get delayed flights and you're expected to be somewhere, uh, that's a hassle. Slow restaurant service, waiting at DMV. And Disney was one of them too, but you dropped yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know I left one out. But waiting is not, for an impatient person like me, it's not a good thing, period. But the only, only one of them really can negatively impact you. Mm -hmm. And so for me, delayed flights would have to go. Kizzy. Well, Disney has no impact because someone has never taken me to Disney. At <laughs> oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's not American, Kizzy. I know. Called out. <laughs> so, delayed flights. I mean, there's always nuts strikes, but you know, I I'm going to be honest. I get hangry. Um, and I, I really like, I just want food at some point. Yeah, I get hangry. My whole family gets hangry. It's a thing. My cousins get hangry. It's we're a hangry family, and, and so I hate slow restaurant service. It irritates me. I just want my food. Like I get eat a little bit of soup before you go to the restaurant. Just a little bit, you know. Just kind of, yeah, all right. Put a little something in the, in the tank. It'll, it'll help get get you past that, Gary. Um, I don't like slow restaurant service, but I understand. It's usually not the waiter or the waitress's fault. It's mm -hmm. back in the kitchen mm -hmm. or they don't have enough people working. Somebody didn't call in and, and, and that's a problem. So I'm kind of sympathetic to that most of the time. Yeah. But I'm, I'm like Dale, delayed flights, especially if you got a connecting flight, mm. that you, you, you got to catch and you're I not. Spent the night. I spent the night in, uh, in a hotel, yeah, a hotel airport. Yeah. And um, no, they give you that thirty-five dollar voucher for no, you. No, no, you, you sleep on the chairs in the in the airport yeah. if you get one of those. Yeah, yeah. And, and it seemed like every time I've ever had to change flights, it's always been in Chicago, and flights always get delayed in Chicago. I don't know why, but I yeah. hate. It. Delayed flights. That's the one that's got to go for me. Well, I know what Chris is kicking out. Kicking out. Chris loves Disney. He's not kicking Disney out. Um, I'd have to go with delayed flights. I, I've had three or four occasions where I missed a flight because my connector was delayed and had to spend the night in the airport and they get that little $35 voucher for your hotel. And hotels are always sold out unless you go way into town. It's like, I don't want to go way into town because I got to be back here at six in the morning. So yeah. delayed flights. In fact, if I can help it, I never book a connected flight. Never, ever, 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 ever. It's on and off, and that's it. I don't want. I don't want to stop. Get delayed. Yeah, but it, delayed. at least at least when you book on those, it's not stopping anywhere, and it's not messing up the second one. I don't know. What's bad is to be delayed, and then you find out it's because one of the flight attendants 
had not arrived at the airport yet from home. Okay. Oh, that's, that's this so happened good. yesterday. That's oh, not, that's not we're good. Home, we're getting on Alabama and, and our flight attendant didn't show up. And Ooh. so we sat there and waited. Worked out great. We had no connecting flight, but that, that happened to me yesterday. Fun fact. Yeah. Okay. One one bad thing about delayed flights too is that when it's finally time to go, then you get bumped. Yeah. That just makes it worse. But, but you know, sometimes they'll hook you up and give you a free flight or something, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I, I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly with that. All right, it's time to go to the Thunder Dome. Is that what time it is? Yeah, it is. You know that's time. Lock the door. Hey, I, I still don't have I still don't have your music, but. We know you don't. Don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> you guys are low budget. Yeah, Chris, you take it away. Come on. Let's low go. budget. Here we go. Coach versus all right, Langston, thanks for the toss. Uh, yeah, we got coach versus coach. Griner, I love this right here. It just gets me all fired up for this segment. I get my rally cap going on here now. Well, I hear you. I hear you, man. Uh, well, hey, let, let's let's just um, get right to it. Uh, since you're on the, the far left, Sam, you get the first uh, shot at this question right here. Should Clemson's Darion Kendrick go pro or should he transfer? Now, I don't know his situation, but I guess supposedly he got into some trouble I don't know if that could affect his draft status, but anytime you have the opportunity to be, you know, top three round pick guy, it's 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 time for you to go. You need to go pro because you're not guaranteed next year and you need to be able to do something for your family. And I know that he came, you know, from the areas around Charlotte. He went to South Point. I actually got to see him you know, play a couple of times. He's a phenomenal athlete. Like he was a quarterback, played wide receiver, then made a DB. He's just a great football player, but – I know he probably does a lot of things off the field and struggles and certain things, and he needs to become a man. Only way to do that is to start working, and that's the professional athlete. Um, I think if he transfers, then it, it's just not a good – I mean, you're at one of the best schools competing for a national championship. Where are you going to transfer to to have a better situation? So I just think going pro is where he needs to do. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Dabo, you know, even like kind of, you know, Nick Saban are, you know, kind of their own unique entities. And sometimes they're not the best fit. I mean, we've seen guys transfer from these major programs and have success. You look at like an Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara had the talent. And, you know, some of these guys at these big programs had that talent, but in a different situation, it helped them flourish. I did see a little quote where, you know, Dabo kind of talked about, you know, had him in the love shack and talking about, you know, discipline being a form of love. So I at least respect that he put it in such a way that it's to not – you know, have them seem like a problem kid. So we don't know exactly what's going on. But I do think that with some of the rules now where guys can go and get, you know, grad transfer, go guys can go get two degrees. Now you're talking about a kid from Football City USA. He now leaves from his new program like a Jalen Hurts with a couple degrees. Now he, he has something that probably hasn't been done a lot in his family. He's going to continue to be a great kid. I mean, we know he's a five-star guy. I don't care what happens, you know, in his situation. He's going to be a top first round, worst, you know, at the absolute worst, second round pick. But now he's got a couple degrees to fall back on. He's a kid, hopefully, and potentially he could have a great year and take him up to one of those top 10 picks and you know, really set his family up for a lifetime. So I think, you know, with the grad transfer rules and some of the additional things guys have with the new, you know, new COVID uh, situation, it gives them a chance to set him up academically and set his money up when he can go to the draft. Um, yeah. Hey, Greg. I guess you want him to be like Kanye West with all these degrees. <laughs> What's that song? <laughs> the, uh... But it's, it's different now, hey. But he can get the degrees and the money. That's the thing. I love seeing my guys get double degrees like that and, and go off and be successful. Kid like Jalen Hurts did it, and people thought, you know, he stayed there after getting benched and it would hurt him. He was able to go to another program. And, again, it's different. Ten years ago, I'm with you, Griner, all day. But nowadays, guys can get more education. And they can sit here and take that year and go crazy. Hurts. Everybody thought he was crazy for leaving Alabama. He went to Oklahoma and got to New York, and, and look what he's doing now. He's starting quarterback. He had a nose ring. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Saban went down with that. <laughs> he couldn't get over it. <laughs> oh my God! You can never go wrong with more education. That's that's my thought process. Uh, college may not be for everybody, but the more degrees you have, hey, it, I just love what it takes to get there. Uh, Griner, uh, we. Oh, no, actually, Grace. We're going to Grace first. Uh, we have been practicing football for a month now. Uh, we've seen our first round of games, so some scrimmages, some games. So you guys have some experience with this now. Does wearing a mask while you're playing the game of football make sense? 
I think done the smart way, it can make sense. And I think what the biggest problem for coaches, players, anybody that I tell people, if you don't have the right mask, if you didn't take time to make sure you bought a mask worth something, that's going to be a problem. These kids out here, these disposable masks walking around, you know, just some random dollar store mask. No, that's not going to be good playing the game of football. I think CMS has provided us with those, kind of, you know, those masks that cover the face mask. I think they're, you know, they're something good. A lot of our kids use the cold weather where you have, you know, the kind of the, the thing that goes over your head and covers your mouth. That's something acceptable. That's something that anybody in any cold weather state would tell you that they already utilize. So stuff like that and really setting our kids up for getting the appropriate mask makes sense. And that's where I think some people get this, you know, get this problem. They think you're wearing some random garden variety mask and, and that's what you need to wear on a football field. No, you need to get something that, hey, it's someone's warning cold weather, it protects you, but also it's not going to restrict your ability to breathe to play the game we love. <laughs> this is a dumb question right here. <laughs> this the dumb, dumbest question we've ever had in this segment. No, we should wear a flipping mask. Like, it's a joke. Um, it's not a joke. But especially, especially past Friday when it's raining and it's cold and it just your mask is all wet and you have to keep wearing it. You can't breathe. Now, listen, you're like, every time you're breathing, water's going into your nose because there's water, like, clogged up on this thing. <laughs> I mean, it's a joke. Football, you're smacking each other, trading sweat, blood, Whatever it takes, like it's just a different type of game. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you think the mask is gonna help? No, all it does is hurt. All it does is hurt. You have to monitor something you don't have to monitor in a football game. There's so many other things you got to pay attention to, and to be successful to have a good running football program going. And now we're worried about mask. I gotta look through the face mask. See, he's got a mask. Oh shoot! Now he's got a mask on. Does he have his mouthpiece on? Oh. Now I got a mouthpiece that attaches to this, or I don't have a mouthpiece that attaches to my face mask. I got to cut a hole through my mask. It's just, it's a joke right now. It really is. Like, you normally have great segments in this, Grice, but you, you know, you dropped the ball on this one. You should have just agreed with me on the uh, wearing the mask. Yeah, like, but that, that's the thing, man. Hey, I'm wearing Hopewell. You talk about adversity. The uh, flipping mask to play football, man. I told everybody, I would have called plays in a clown suit. I don't care. Our yeah. kids, hey, so, so what, week one? We didn't care. And I think that was one of the big things that everybody asked what's going on. Our kids shrugged their shoulders and said, I don't care what you tell me I got to wear. I don't care what you tell me I got to do. We're going to go out here and play some daggum football. And it's mud, rain, whatever, mask, I don't care. But I get what you're I understand it. I mean, we don't want to do it. But, again, it's football. We, we teach these kids life lessons through adversity. So what? That's the rules that they want to stake. We're going to do it. And for the record, Grice, I would have worn a clown suit just to go to a football game. That's how bad I wanted to go see football this week. Oh, I, well, I, I agree. Right there. I think Grace, we're all in this clown suit uh, last Friday and it was like turned brown. You know? It's okay, man. Grind, I know you can't dress. You got the you have the hair, Grind. I, I, I have the I have the dress. It's like thanks to have the dress. Right, you, you've been running now. You got that swag gear out there now. So. <laughs> oh, you got to. Why do you think we run? Come on, That's man. For single life. You got to like look apart for the single life. I got you. I you. Always got to look good. I hear you. Hey, Griner, uh, should North Carolina, now that we've seen the schedule, we've seen how football is, the, the bad fields, just everything together, should North Carolina adjust the postseason because of football ends in April and May? Uh, No. Shouldn't adjust. I mean, we, we dug ourselves this own grave. We should have played in the fall like South Carolina. So now we got to eat crow, everybody. Everybody's got to deal with situations now. What are you going to do when injuries happen? Like we've had a few injuries happen because we ain't been able to prepare and stuff like that. But the good thing is we're playing football and we're going to do everything we can. The whole key is win, lose, or draw, you know, the whole situation. We got to be able to be happy that we're out here competing. And it gets rid of depression. It gets rid of a lot of things that kids are going through in this past year, this pandemic. So, no, I don't change anything. Um, I just, I just think that it's tough and we got to deal with it. You know, I do think there's some changes that need to be made, you know, as, as far as and, – and the way I look at this, everyone talks about South Carolina and how it was a success and all the things like that. Go look at certain schools, not the Gaffneys, not the top, you know, the top programs. Go look at like a Fort Mill. Go look at like – I think River Bluff was another school only got four or five games. I mean, everybody wasn't in this wonderful situation in which they got a ton of games here. So playing in the spring and, and if we all continue to do the things we're doing, Grinder, it looked like you guys did a great job from what I've seen. You know, we're going to adhere to it. We're going to get our seven games, which is a lot more than a lot of people did in the fall in South Carolina, if we're being honest. We, you know, one thing we talk about the fields, we don't want our fields to be messed up 
for an extended period. We don't want the, you know, the, the, the problems of one season to go into two. So the bigger thing for me is, I mean, it, it hurts, but in this weird situation, I do think the casualty is the postseason. And, you know, if it's lopping off a week in order to finish a little earlier, that's something that we're going to have to do. But if guys are taking their time and getting, you know, getting this done by adhering to the rules and regulations, we're going to get our regular season games in. And the best of the best are going to show and the cream is going to rise to the crop. And, you know, we're going to have the playoffs and hopefully end it earlier, get it done and, and get these kids staying safe. Yeah. yeah. I, agree with both I agree with both of you, but you're right, Sam. Uh, we, we, we got stuck in this situation. We've just got to make the best of it and finish it out and just move into the next season and, and hope for the best. All right. Hey, can, we, can we talk about Langston's like shape up? This thing, I'm telling you, he's SMP. I know you don't know what SMP is, but that boy, he looks smooth. I don't oh, know. He, he, he is busy, man. I I'm sitting here hanging out on Sunday after on Sunday, Monday. He's on he's on talking preps on Sunday. I'm sitting here like, man, that's the hardest working yeah, man. Right. I'm, I'm, working, I'm working hard. I'm working hard. I want to I want to I want to show you guys um this video from Garinger. The big story last week, the Garinger football coach Greg Fowler resigned a couple hours before the game began. And there was a lot of discussion about why and what happened. And after the game, we asked one of the Garinger players about it, and this is what he said. Yeah, it was hard to play right after the game. We worked before the game. We couldn't really. We was all debating if we should play or not because we felt like that was messed up because the way it happened, like, all over a student that wasn't eligible. We were trying to fight for him, but when it happened, he tried to fight, but he just got late. It feels good, but I, I wish we – hope we get better, hope we click more. What we do, we got to do to win the ball game. All right, so you heard it right there from one of the players. Um, just anybody just want to go give me your – Bryce, you had a very strong opinion earlier. You yeah. heard what the, the, the kids said. What, what's your opinion about what happened at Guarantee? It, it, it angers me, and I mean, I really have to be careful of my words. I said it when it initially came out, and I still feel that same way. I mean, you know, again, let's let's be very clear. And I wear this, you know, this Hope Boy shirt. Our first year, Garinger had two wins. We had zero. So mm. when people talk about situations like this, that is very similar to our Hope Boy program and where we came from and where we started from. So if we were to take situations with eligibility issues, our first year, we had 21 kids that were ineligible. If we would have taken that situation and said, you know what? This is a problem. This is too much. We need to leave now. If we'd have done that, we wouldn't be experiencing the, the, the these kids and the accomplishments that they have. That's one of the big things for me is everyone talks about this like it's something that's foreign or something that's different. We live through that. And, you know, close to my head coach, I know Griner deals the same thing with eligibility issues. If there's something where, you know, it doesn't go your way, we're not going to teach the kids that, hey, we need to run out here and, and, and go do something else. And, again, there are going to be crazy things that happen. For every story I bet that, you know, that the coach had, I have a story that I bet could either match or beat what he's talking about mm -hmm. in terms of, of adversity. But what we have with our program right now is a direct result of the kids seeing that we're sticking into whatever it is that they have. They know we're in the trenches with them. They know we defend them at all costs and support them. And we are able to see some of the fruits of our labor continuing to work. So that's kind of the big thing why you see such strong reactions from me, because I was there. I remember our first year seeing that guarantee program under Coach Caldwell. And to see that it go in a different direction with them taking this new coach in and some of the things that he was stating that he wanted to do and they didn't come to fruition, it angers me to a point of just, you know, like I said, I have to just be careful what I think. Kenzie, from a student perspective, you see something like that. As that hits you, you know, you have a, a, a football team ready to go and the coach leaves two hours before the game. Just from a student's perspective, how do you feel about that? It irritates me because I feel like over and over again, we've been preached to this whole year. Just stick with it. Just stick with it. Just stick with it. And it'll all work out. Like, that's been – and then, you know, even in football, like my whole – athletic career has been if you stick with it good things will come like you shouldn't just quit and so I think it's a coach that for me has always been someone I've trusted that's always been someone I feed off of like and and for someone to just quit like that like I'd be like what what's the point like you, you don't believe in me you, you don't care like over an eligibility thing like why would I try to be eligible then because you obviously like you fought for me, like, no, you fought, you lost, and then you gave up, like, and it's irritating because, like, it, when it's a student that does that or an athlete that does that, there's going to be, like, per repercussions, like, and I feel like there's no repercussions for the coach, and it's just like, oh, we'll talk about it, like, we'll be, we'll be disappointed, but, like, at the end of the day, he's going to be able to probably go out and find another job, and, like, 
Yeah. It's just hard. Dale, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts because I know how passionate you are about high school football. Hold on, Sam. We'll come to you. I know how passionate you are about high school football, Dale. Just curious your thoughts. Garrett is working on his 11th coach now in 21 years. So this would have been uh, – I, I used to do a, a lot of what we called confession session. And this would have been a confession session because um, – what he has done. So what the, the Garinger going through multiple co uh, coaches, that's, that's a hard place to coach. And there's a lot of factors that play into uh, play into having so many coaches go through. But I think part of that factor is exactly what happened uh, with Fowler. And that is that coaches, what he did was wrong. He signed up for a gig and, as Kenzie said, his players were preached to, to do this, to do this, and this will happen. So he's, I'm, I'm, I've not heard him talk, but I'm certain he's given those speeches of, you got to fight through adversity. You got to, you know, all the things that football throws at you is adversity. And what does he do when adversity hits him? <clears throat> and that's wrong. That told, that showed his players the wrong thing that's why i say i have a lot of respect for what those players did yeah. uh they could have turned they could have tucked their tails and they, turned they got to marsh park about 6 15 i was actually very glad they got there sam we're gonna come to you for your final thoughts at the end but gary and chris give me your thoughts gary you go first well one of the things we always talk about is if if you quit and usually when kids quit it's over playing time and, you know, I would always say, if you quit, well, how much are you going to play then? Mm -hmm. And um, that's one of the things you, I've always been taught and I've taught kids, when you quit once, you'll quit twice. And then that becomes a part of your, your character. Mm -hmm. If something adverse hits you, then the easiest thing to do is quit. Right. Um, being that he has coached in CMS for another, a number of years, he knows the reputation of Garinger. Mm -hmm. If you're from Charlotte, you know what you're getting into when you go to Garinger. You know, they like to talk about the coaching turnover. But what about the administrative turnover? Mm -hmm. uh, what about the student body turnover? That's a tough, tough place. Um, you know, a, a lot of coaches don't survive Garinger in that they never get a, a job again. Yeah. They get turned off from coaching high school sports or it's on their resume and, and they interview and people automatically assume, well, if you coach that guarantee, you must not be able to coach. Mm -hmm. And a lot of careers have died, not because the coach couldn't coach, but just because he had his name attached to guarantee. Yeah, and, and Gary, I've heard so many coaches go to Garage and tell me they were going to be the one that could turn it around and they were going to stay there and and, and commit. And as I said, I've heard that five or six times, and Garage is on their 11th coach in 21 years. Mm -hmm. Nobody's been able to stay there and commit, and that's a big issue. Chris, your thoughts here? Well, just to, uh, to tag on to what you just said, uh, there's been some good coaches, some phenomenal coaches. Uh, coach Caldwell, he, he he's a great guy, and, you know, it didn't work out for him. Chris Carter had a good little run, and he's gone on to South Carolina and had amazing success. Uh, and Pete Gilchrist used to tell me all the time that he thought he could go to Garinger and turn it around, but can he? I don't know. I mean, I mean it's true. Everybody it, could. <laughs> it's a tough, tough school um, to go to. Uh, now, I've not spoke to Coach Fowler. I would love to hear his thoughts and, and, and give him an opportunity to, to tell us why this happened. Coach, Coach Fowler definitely has a side of the story, and you know I hope that one day he'll come on and tell it. He gave me some hints to it, but that's personal between he and I. But I, I definitely think he has a side of the story, and I know he's been getting killed, and, yes. and you know, I, and I know that's tough on his end. But go ahead, Chris. And I would love to hear what he's got to say because I'm sure there, there's there's some legitimacy to why he did it and he, why he felt compelled that he needed to do it. And, and you know, if, if what I've heard that he was trying to help a player uh, with some eligibility issues and maybe wasn't getting support, I understand that. And I applaud him for trying to help a player. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes the needs of the many I need to outweigh the needs of the few or the oh. one. 
And remember all those other guys, I mean, the 15, 20, I don't know their numbers. Maybe they have 28 kids. Maybe they got 30 or 50. I don't know. But you got to remember those guys that clock in every day and come to practice every day. Those guys that look up to you because you've been instilled as their coach, as that leadership guy. And, and he needs to remember those other 30 or 40 versus that one. Now, again, I applaud what he tried to do to stand up for one and, 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 but you don't understand everything, but you've got to remember the ones that show up every day and think of your whole team and, and just took it out for the year. You know what? You might not agree with your administration, but you know what? You sign the bill, the, the, the agreement to go there, finish out the year, then go to another job. Now, I don't know if he's hireable. I don't, a lot of coaches all over the state have been talking to me all week. What happened to this guy? What's the deal? And all of them, they, underlie, they, they said, man, I'd never hire that guy. He's a quitter. It's, so it's I, a I, short season, season too. I mean, it's a really short season. It wasn't like you had to go up. A whole season. All right, Sam. I know you're chomping at the bit. We can give you your final thoughts. You can talk about Garrett or whatever else is on your mind. You're on the screen. Yeah, and you talk about it. Um, so we don't know the situation completely. Like, is it a kid that like was been there grinding out, told him he was gonna be eligible, and then something slipped through? Because a lot of people don't understand. I, I'm involved in an inner city school, Garringer's still an inner city type school, and uh what you're dealing with is I I have students every single day that live in group homes. Imagine going through this pandemic and living in a group home, something like that. Like what if there's a kid that's ineligible because he has no Wi-Fi and all oh, we have Wi-Fi. No, they don't. Everybody doesn't have Wi-Fi. I don't care about, oh, we're providing hotspots. That's not true. It's not true at all. We don't know what's going on. Some of these kids got to watch five or six kids at home because they're the oldest sibling and they got to do school for all these other kids. You see what I'm saying? We don't know the situation. We dropped the ball on not being able to say everybody's eligible. Let's help the depression. Everybody's eligible. Let's play. Because now all of a sudden, that one player that couldn't play, maybe it changed his life. It might have saved his life instead of going to the streets. And I think that we've really messed up. Oh, we're, we'll, we'll bend it a little bit. It's not a 2.0. We're just, you got to pass three out of four. We don't know the situations. They're really, really bad in some spots. And I think that, like, this coach – you know, I, I could back him. I think that he was a fighter for a kid, and I don't know the situation, but it could have been something very, very difficult like this. And I think that he went the battle so hard, and he saw that there wasn't the same passion, maybe from the principle that he had, and he knew he couldn't be successful. Now, he still should have duked it out and then and then told him, like, tell the principal, hey, I'm, I'm working here, but I don't agree with you, and I think you're completely wrong. It's okay to have an opinion, but don't leave you guys. And I think that he would change some things up, but – I definitely understand. We messed up. I'm telling you, there's there's probably 30 kids that should be playing for West Charlotte right now in my situation where the kids should be eligible. Now he's, there's a chance he goes to the streets, and then we lose them forever. And we wonder why what's going on because these inner city schools, they have an extremely hard time during this COVID online learning. The remote learning, it's not for us. It's not good. Not good at all. So that's it. All right. Well, that's uh, Sam Griner unplugged. And you always get the, the truth, the heartfelt uh, from Coach Griner. Great show, guys. Um, we, we aren't heavy. I hit the 130 minute, 130 uh, hour and uh, we, we, we're almost done. Karen Belks uh, is a big fan of yours, Sam. Second time she's giving you a shout out. Mm -hmm. uh, Jermaine Moss says, Panos Burlos is South McNeese recognition. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to write his name down, uh, Panos Burlos, for next week, and I see what I can find. Joe Evans, help me out, man. The standard. <laughs> yeah, help me out, Panos Burlos. I'm next. He does a great job. He does a great. I, yeah, he, he's a good dude. I, 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 he he co-hosts a show when somebody couldn't make it one night. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. He's like a brother from another mother. You know what I'm saying? He's not. Now, now you remember. But look, guys, great show. Thanks, Sam Howell, for coming on. It's good seeing you. I wish, I wish I'd get my beard like Sam. How, hey, how good did Josh look, though? That hair was, boy, my boy. Yeah, he, yeah that's impressive. That's impressive. That's, 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 my that's, good. Years, that's, that's impressive. All right, guys, I'm Langston. That's Chris. I mean, that's Sam. That's Chris. That's Grace. That's Dale. That's Miss Kinsey. And that's Gary Richmond. We are talking preps. We'll see you next Monday at 8 o'clock. Thank you.